with a three right away. Just attack the basket. James catches, puts up the three. Won't go. Rebound box. Back out to Allen. His three point of Tie game with five seconds remaining. Welcome to the ultimate super coach and fantasy sports show. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Boom shakalak! G'day guys and welcome to an Insight NBA show. I am the SC Brain. We're here for a mock draft and I'm joined by the man with uh, two of the best things, two of the best, he's got the best Pop Funko collections behind him, but he's also got the most luscious beard in NBA fantasy basketball. Jake Skidmore, how are you, mate? G'day, Brino. Yeah, I'm going well, mate. And uh, how, what a treat, you know. I get to see your gorgeous face for the night. I mean, and talk a bit of uh, basketball. Hell yeah. I mean, sign me up every single day of the week just to be with you, mate. Can't lose, can you? Can't lose. <laughs> no, nah, mate, I'm in a good spot too. We're going to have some fun. We're going we're gonna to draft uh, from a couple of different positions, mate. We're, we're just going to load up this draft lobby in a second. We've got a couple of minutes to go before the draft kicks off. But um, obviously with the Matty Mock series that Mr. G Wiz has been doing himself, um, he's he's gone through a few now. And I've been assigned with the lovely task of picking from six. So um, we haven't covered SGA yet. Uh, which was very going to be very, very hard to get him at six. So uh, I might have to look at Giannis Antetokounmpo. Um, so we'll, we'll see how we go there. We'll play with a couple of options. Where are you going to pick from in this one, mate? So I was going to go one today. I mean, I've done a lot of mock drafts so far, but I don't think I've actually ever done one picking Jokic. So I want to kind of see how I'm going to do it. I know I watched Matty. Actually, I did the one with Matty when he did Jokic. Um, yeah. And he went one route. I, I want to see how I'm going to kind of fall into it and how I'm going to adapt the Jokic game style. Because you can go so many ways. Um, so I want to see, yeah, what's, what, are the, which way I'm kind of going to lean when it's like, if I ever get pick one for Jokic, which I actually do in our, you... in Maddie's one, I'm pick one in that. Oh, there you go. So it's a little bit of a yeah. practice for you. 12, same 12 team league, nine, um, nine yep. cats. So, nine um, cat, yep. good little practice, mate. But, um, yeah, that's right, what, what's your, you're talking Jokic. What's your tactic when you're going with Jokic? Are you, are you somebody that gonna is going to look to potentially punt blocks or are you just kind of going to take best available off the back of knowing that he covers so many good categories? So with Jokic, we know that the turnovers, but I never draft for turnovers. That's just not something I put out of my mind straight away. Um, his threes aren't like as as good, but you can, like, you know, it's, it's an okay start. It's nothing sensational, um, but... It will be that or points. They would be the three that you lean. Um, so we'll see what comes to me in a second. But the thing is, like, when it's Jokic, you can you can adapt on the fly. And you can either do, yeah, the box threes or points if you really want to go hard into it. But there's so much talent in that second round at the turn that you can just really, you know, sideways track what, it, what you want to do. Um, threes are obviously always the easiest thing to get off the waiver wire as well. Um, so, it, but if I'm going to, stay healthy in my blocks, then I've got to make sure I get them early because those blokes start to come off around about round three or four with like, you know, Mobley, Turner, Wembenyama. Um, so if I'm going to lean that, uh, I'm going to have to decide that early, depending on who gets me at pick two and three. Um, but yeah, if not, then we're just going to go straight into this Jokic one. How about you with Giannis or SGA? Yeah. What's your plan? Very different because tactics. obvious one. Yeah, <laughs> there's very, very different tactics. I mean, look, if I get Giannis, I'm obviously going to be punting turnovers and free throws pretty much from day dot. Uh, the draft's starting in a couple of minutes now. So um, if I go with SGA, I don't necessarily have to punt too many categories. And and the luckily, you know, we're, first of all, we've got to give a big shout out to Fantasy Schools, a sponsor mm -hmm. of the show. Uh, we're going to be linking up with Fantasy Scores for this draft specifically to give us a good idea on punting categories. If it, you know, you can basically input the players that you've drafted. You can connect live to your draft as well through the Fantasy Scores website, and it will eliminate the players that have been picked live throughout the draft. And then you can also adjust your punt as you go. So you just tick off free throw and turnover, like I have. If I'm assuming I'm going to take Giannis, and it'll tell me and it'll re-rank the players based on my punt. So as an example here. We've got, uh, you know, Luka Doncic is ranked around that kind of five, six mark, and he comes up to third if you're punting turnovers and free throws, which makes complete sense. Um, and then you've, you, we've even got LeBron James, which an, another one that makes sense, he actually goes up 14 ranks if you're punting turnovers and free throws. So it gives you a nice live ladder of, of, 
I guess the players that you should target throughout your draft. And mm. luckily enough, the guys at Fantasy Scores have given us a discount code for everybody. So use insight with fantasyscores.com and you can get yourself five US dollars off. Um, very cheap as well. The full year subscription is like thirty dollars. So um, you know, incredibly valuable. You've used it yourself, Skitty, as well, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. They're, I never thought I needed it until I needed it, and then I went, "Holy crap, this thing's actually is fantastic." Um, obviously, yeah, it's a little bit hard when you're doing an ESPN draft and you're like, "Well, I can't do the live tracker," but geez, that live tracker makes a difference. That is sensational. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I've done it for a lot more, um, and yeah, I'm gonna be continuing to use it as well. <laughs> 100%. We've got a Yahoo draft coming up this weekend. Um, Matty G's comp that he runs himself. So that'll be a good mm. one to, to give it a go on. Oh, damn, um, is that this weekend? Of, yeah, Sunday it is coming up. So well, um, crap, I think that Sunday. Means the NBA, that means the season's like two weeks away. Yeah, less, like Let's nine go. days away. Let's no, go. so pumped. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's been not, oh, like, it. sometimes when the season gets to the end, it's a nice little break for about a month. And then you start scratching yourself, going, shit, I need. Um, you know, I, I want some NBA. I need some NBA yeah. in my life. Um, mm. Coming into the draft now, mate, and your pick is pretty much ready to go. And you said you were going yes, Jokic. Uh, and I will draw. Lovely. So Jokic and Doncic have gone one and two. It seems like Luca's now becoming the consensus number two. I mean... Do you agree? Or, Do you think Joel Embiid deserves to be falling or is it what Luke is doing? So I, I actually have seen ones now where people have taken like Shea or Tyrese at two. Um, I think I'd be more comfortable with taking um, with taking Embiid at two. I still think that's the – I still think Embiid at two is the correct um, pick. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Luke Kyrie with Luca just really it, – it scares me a bit. And as we can see here, so Jokic has gone one, Doncic two, Embiid three, <coughs> Shea four, Tatum five, and then you've taken Giannis at six. And then someone's getting a very, very nice little gift here with Tyrese Halliburton at seven because, as you well know, I'm massive on Tyrese Halliburton. I think mm -hmm. I think the assists that he can provide are invaluable with uh, what's going on with Harden up in the air. Um Assist is something that you need to get early. Otherwise, you're just not getting it later on off the wire or anything like that. So, um, yeah, yeah he, he's a sister invaluable, and I'm predicting that he's going to have just another massive year in Indiana. That team is built to be around him. So that's what I'm thinking, that. at least. But what do you think? Do you think Luca deserves this too and moving up, or what? Do you, where are you having him? Oh, it just depends on your tactics. I mean, if you're a punting specialist and you love a punt category, you've got to punt a couple with, with Luca, really, don't you? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, if, you, if you're if you looking to take maybe best available or you want to – I mean, to be honest, I'd I'd probably take Luca at two purely because of the upside's there. And Joel Embiid, we've talked about it a lot around the fact that Joel Embiid having Nick Nurse as the coach over there, we know that Nick Nurse loves mm. to play starters, big minutes, and do, can Embiid keep up with that? Um, I, you know, they're – could be a, it could be an injury on the cards this year. Hopefully not for him, but we just know that the workload's going to be there. It's going to be tough for him to stay on the court all season. Um, but then again, Luca's not uh, unsusceptible to an injury or two, is he? No, that's right. His ankles seem to always be something wrong or his thigh or something like that. So yeah. you just never know with him. Uh, we'll catch up here. So we've had Halliburton go at seven, Steph at eight, Kyrie at nine, which I hate. Um, Davis at 10, Durant 11, LaMelo 12, Dame 13, Trey Young 14. He's actually been kind of – he's been going down a bit, actually, um, from some that I've seen. And Sabonis 15, Devin Booker mm. 16. I've seen Trey drop to about pick 20 in some drafts. But yeah, back end of back end of second round, I've seen him start to go, but he's starting to creep yeah. up the board a little bit now from what I've seen, yeah. maybe getting closer to the season. People watched his uh, couple of preseason games for the Hawks and they, he they remembered that he's too. actually, yeah, they remembered that he's a good basketball player. And uh, yeah. so um, I think he's just that guy that where you've got to punt field goal percentage probably. Um, yeah. So uh, I had him last year and his turnovers and field goal percentage ruined me on, on multiple occasions. And mm -hmm. I'm an Atlanta fan. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know whether I'd be taking him that early. I mean, I got him at nine last year. So, um, yeah, if he falls to back end of second round, I think you probably have to take him, don't you? Um, uh, yeah. He's paired him with Durant too. So that's not – that's a pretty good pairing for your free throws, um, your points. Yep. It helps your assist. Trey Young for someone that – he actually doesn't get as many threes as everyone thinks is as much of a good shooter that he's been hyped up to be. 
um, which is kind of kind of weird. He needs to get his percentage up. His percentage was horrible last year. So, um, yep. yeah, if he gets that back up, I mean, I can definitely see a, a world where he is um, back to the play that we all thought he was going to be. Absolutely. And um, since we're talking then, Anthony Edwards went one pick before me. I would have taken Anthony Edwards at 19 if he fell to me. But um, Desmond Bain at 19, I'm not going to be upset with that either, especially with the start of the season with Jar being mm -hmm. out. He's shown some good stuff through the preseason games for the Grizz this year, uh, well, mm -hmm. this, this season. So I do like Desmond Bain and I think I can lean into him a little bit um, at the back that of the second going? round. And then... Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think I've seen him going pretty early, uh, like mid-second round in a few drafts. Okay. I, he probably could fall, to be fair. But the guys that were left there, so after that, we've got Donovan Mitchell, who went 20. We've got Jaron Jackson Jr., who I was also looking at and fits the punt for 21. Carl Anthony Towns, 22, and Kawhi Leonard going 23. What are your thoughts here, mate? you got the double on the turn. I do, and I'm going to go for my assists. First and pick up James Harden. I'm not too worried about the Philly situation. I think it's still um, going to be James Harden no matter where he is. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm quite happy picking him up there. And then I am going to get some... Where the shit is he? There he is. I'm going to take Christoph Porzingis to get myself a bit of blocks as well just because... Um, just how I think he's going to fit in quite nicely now that Rob Williams isn't, isn't there and he's going to be the main defender that they're going to have to rely on. So I fully expect his rebound numbers to still be up around that 10 mark. Um, but, yeah, I think his blocks could be absolute um, absolute skyrocket. He's not a bad passer either out of his position. So, um, yeah, I'm actually kind of I'm, – I'm, I didn't think I'd be that – like uh, this in on Porzingis, but I think the Boston system really helps him and he will fit well into that as well. Yeah, oh, uh, 100%. 100%. I agree with you on that. Um, we've seen a few go since. Uh, yeah. After your Porzingis, we've seen Jimmy Butler got 26, which oh, I don't know whether I'm a huge fan. I think he burnt me last year, just sat a lot of games in a row for me. Um, mm. Pascal. Siakam, 27, Miles Turner, 28, Fred Van Vliet, 29. And I picked up LeBron James at 30 purely because Fantasy Scores actually has him as the 10th ranked player for my punt of free throw percentage and turnovers, which makes okay. a lot of sense. And obviously he's great for points, rebounds, assists, threes. Um, so he fits the build and, and uh, picked LeBron James at 30. I, I see him starting to fall closer to 40, but obviously he wouldn't yeah. have made it back around to me, I don't think. If I, uh, I think if people I are just him. getting... Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I think people are just getting a little bit cautious about LeBron's um, games played. Oh, 100%. Uh, I, think, I think they're just a little bit worried about that. Other than that, yeah. I think it's a fantastic bit. Um, it's, it's a, you know, it makes sense as well why you'd be worried because, you know, the, the plantar fasciitis and all the issues he's had, the lower limb issues he's had, the bloke's 39 years old. But I think mm. we can't discount the fact the guy's name's LeBron James mm. and uh, he'll find his way to get himself up. I think this year, um, knowing that it hasn't exactly been a great couple of years for the Lakers. Mm. So um, I feel like he might try and get on the court a little bit more if his body lets him. Yeah, I think, you, I think you're spot on there. Um, yeah, I'd just be uh, – I think you could have got him back around the other way or back around. Uh, but other than that, like, you know, when, you, when the thing about people is, like, they always want to try and get as much value um, as they can. But when yep. you're in the positions where – you know, you look at a guy that's perfect for the type of team that you're trying to build. There's nothing wrong with just going up those couple of extra little picks just to make sure you get your guy. Because there's a massive difference between, say, say you having to get LeBron James that works well for your team and then uh, he goes and you end up, like you leave him for a pick and then you end up having to sell for someone like Jalen Brown. There's a massive difference between, you know, those two like type of players that you that of the point that you need. So, yeah, yeah 100%, like nothing wrong there. So who do we... We got LeBron at what was it? LeBron at thirty. Then we saw Larry Markkinen at thirty-one. Bam, thirty-two. Paul George, thirty-three. He's been dropping a lot actually. Um, thirty-three. That's actually not a bad spot for him. Wembenyama, thirty-four. Cade, thirty-five. I I can't remember the last time I saw Cade get to the thirties. So that's outrageously good for them. <laughs> Paul, thirty-six. Brown, thirty-seven. That's too early. Mobley, thirty-eight. Brunson, thirty-nine. Murray, forty. 
Then we've got DeRozan, 41, Drew Holiday, 42, Zion, 43, and Garland. For, Garland at 44. Jeez, well That's good value back. for Garland. Very yeah, good value to get Garland at 44. Uh, yeah. I, I took Zion at 43, uh, purely based on the punt. And I guess we can clarify as well, when you're punting a category, you're not just avoiding all of the, the mm. you know, categories on purpose you're looking at obviously the categories that you want to pump up as well and and for me i I look to be pretty strong with points in this build um also pretty strong on the boards desmond bain is carrying my threes a little bit at the moment my assists are a little bit low at the moment as well so i probably want to prop up with a point guard for my next pick um your pick's coming up though mate and you've got the turn again who are you looking Mm. at here so i've currently got harden porzingis and Jokic. so I've gone – okay, that went quick. Um, so I think here I will quite comfortably go for – I'm going to go one more on blocks and I'm going to take Chet here at 48. Mm-hmm. And then I could really shore up my blocks if I wanted to, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to then – push myself into a – yeah, I'm going to get some more points and threes, and I'm going to take a Zach Levine. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, Zach Levine. I, th- I feel like Zach Levine's being slept on a little bit. Um, I, I'm, I'm yeah. big on Zach Levine this year. I just feel like OG uh, – not OG Ananobi. Um, DeMar DeRozan <laughs> is going to be uh, probably maybe taking a step back in usage. He's getting older mm-hmm. now. Father Time's going to start to catch up with him eventually, and, and Levine's got to put his hand up at some point. Is it going to be this year? I think it kind of has to be, doesn't it? I mean, they they need him to to really step it up. Um, he has to be, you know, he has to be the guy to be able to um, show, like, yep, I can take over this if um, if push come, if push comes to shove. So, um, yeah, I um, yeah, I think he, and he, you know, he's such a good shooter. He can create his own shot. He's just a fantastic like. Such a good offensive basketball player. So um, I think you, and especially too, if Kobe White is the starting point guard, which is what is looking like it's happening from the preseason, um, then Levine could get a shitload more assists too. And he could, because he can pass the ball. Um, yep. So yeah, I could really see Levine doing a lot more on ball this year. Yeah, and there's still a lot more kind of uh, not. There's not really much assurity of of who's going to be the starting point guard in Chicago either. So, you know, does Levine have to just put his hand up and you know take on a lot more of the ball handling duties out there? You know, they got Alex Caruso. Uh, they've got Dasunmu. Um, they've just signed Carter. Are the the minutes going to be split there? You know, Carter probably the more natural playmaker out of the three, isn't he? So Levine might have mm. to put his hand up. Yeah, well, um, Levine and um, and uh, Kobe White are definitely combo guards. Um, while Carter is yep. more of that defensive point guard. Um, yep. So, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see. But, again, if they're, do, if they're going off of um, – if we're going off of what's happened in um, preseason, Kobe White's been starting every game. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure there'll be games where they need more defense and they'll put um, Carter in the starting lineup or even DeSumo, even though that didn't go very well. But – yeah, we'll uh, yeah, a few, few, uh, few picks after ours. We've got DeAndre Ayton at 50, Jared Allen going at 51, Vucevic 52, Ananobi 53. I picked up Giddy at 54 just to fill my guard spot. He'll get me some assists. Um, I feel like 54, between 50 to 65 is where Giddy's going at the moment. So 54 yeah. is okay for me. I can live with that. Um, and then, yeah, we're seeing some quite outrageous picks at the moment. We've got Ingram 55, Claxton 56, Kessler 57. Then we've got Beal, 58, Shangoon, 59, and Julius Randle, 60. Rudy Gobert at 61. Is that what you Jeez. were reacting to? Or do you feel like that's a little bit early for Rudy Gobert? No, I don't feel like it's early for him. I just haven't been seeing him go that early. But it's it's been like, oh, look, people are starting to get blocks off the board. Like Kessler that late is outrageous. Like Claxton, Kessler, Jared Allen, um, Chet, all going in that range. And then people have gone, oh, shit, I need blocks. And some bloke, who, who is this bloody... Kayvan just reaching for Gobert. Like, I've been getting him at 80. Like, to see yeah, him go you, there. You can wait another couple of rounds. Ridiculous. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, they decided, yep, this is the time that I want to go in. So, that's fair enough, too. Also, 64 for Tyrese Maxi. That's fantastic. We got 
Um, Jay Dub uh, at 62, Simon 63, 64 for Maxi, 65 for Grant, 66 for Parlo. My question to you is, Nate, mm. how do you feel about Simon's at 63? Because I've been very uh, vocal on how I think Simon's is going to go this year. I mean, I don't, I'm actually not quite sure. I, I, we've seen what he's done in the past when he's had opportunity. The guy just jacks point, jack shots up for fun. You know, is the field goal percentage and the efficiency in general going to be there? Um, yes, he's proven himself over a short run of games. Without Dame Lillard there, he got a good run, an extended run, but can he do it all season? You know, I, I, I don't know whether he can, if I'm completely honest. And obviously they've gone and drafted Scoot Henderson. They're, they're leaning into youth there. So there's no question about his role, but I, I'm probably not going to pick him up unless he slides oh down a little bit. Tell us about what you think, though. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't know. He's um, he's kind. Of, hang on a second. It's my pick, and I'm just going, deciding. If, is this a two center league? It is. Yeah. I've already got enough. Yeah, all the all the mocks are unfortunately. Yeah. Um, shit. I need to make a pick. I'm going to go early on. Him, bugger. He works really well for my team. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Simon's, I'm just so like, I, I I think he's just a, he just scores and does nothing else. But why would, I don't think Aiton's going to be letting him score whenever he wants. I don't think Scoot's going to be the same. He's a good catch and shoot, but he, then he does nothing else for fantasy. Yeah. Like, he doesn't get assists. He gets no defensive stats. He doesn't get rebounds. I'm pretty sure he almost averaged the least amount of rebounds or something like that last year. Like, it was just ridiculous. His free throws are nice, fair, and he sometimes can be a shot chucker. So I just don't know. And I don't know when that comes to, like, be good for fantasy with what he's going to provide this year. So I'm – I know. I think he's going a bit high at 60s. I think there's better options. I mean, when I'm looking for points – Around eight, uh, around 70, 80? Yeah, 100%. I'll take a swing on him. But until then, yeah, yeah I enough. just don't think. Um, I don't think I'm that high on him. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Probably tend to agree with you, mate. Um, now, Thanks. we've seen a few, yeah, a few go, and a lot of bigs on the board at the moment, aren't there? You know, and, and especially when you've got my power forwards and, and your forward slot in general, you're probably going to end up having dual power forward center eligibility in most of those spots as well, especially on Yahoo. Um, so essentially you're looking at maybe four bigs in your, in this lineup here, and there's a few coming up at the moment. I mean, you've got Mark Williams on the board here. Who's a nice pick around this, maybe 90 to hundred mark. Uh, there's also got Draymond Green, even though he's out for the start of the year, he might be a stash around this point. If you need some extra assists or out of position assists, um, I'm trying to work out who I'm going to take next. It probably needs to be another big man because if I'm going to lean into this punt, it kind of makes sense. Free throws and turnovers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Draymond might not be a bad option. Draymond, he um, reckons. It's probably a little bit late. I'll probably get him next round. Um, I reckon he'll fall a little bit. Uh, but there's one guy on the board at the moment that I'm still looking at and might be a little bit of a homer pick. Oh, but um, it'll be hard, it'll be hard to say. Yeah, no, not DeAndre Hunter. Not a fucking <laughs> chance. <laughs> um, that bloke will be like to see the court this year. It's the way they're going. Um, Two options here. Uh, I'm either thinking Okongwu or Gafford. Who do you pick between Okongwu and Gafford? I mean, I oh well, Okong, if Capella finally goes, Okongwu is just you know he's so juicy. Um, but Gafford has the minutes. Yeah, already, you know? it's a safer pick, isn't it, to lean into he's Gafford considering he's got the role. Yeah, but you know, I don't think you can. Yeah, Okongwu is starting to shoot threes now, man. Like he's mm, starting to nice turn it on now. Yep, hundred percent. It's um, exciting, isn't it, Atlanta fan to see? You know, he <laughs> expand his game this year. So we'll we'll see. Well, and also it depends what happens with Capella, like you said. So it's a little yeah. bit of a guesswork pick, isn't it? You just got to hope yep. that Capella gets moved if you're picking up a Congo. Or does oh, he yeah, play 100%. the four? Who he unlocks, oh, pff, mate. If he can yeah. shoot, he can definitely play the four. I mean, shit, stop bloody playing Hunter uh, mm -hmm. or Bay. Like if they can't start Bay, like come on. Nah. Come on. I wouldn't have thought so. Not at the four. I think he's too small um, to play yeah. at the four. And imagine a Kongwu and Capella on the court at the same time. No one's scoring in the paint. I'll give you that. I'll tell you that for free. There? Is my boy still there? 
shit. I'm gonna have to make a pick first. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take trade lines just to get some yeah, rebounds and some assists for that. I kind of like how he's been playing with, um, how he's been playing with um, Wemby. So I mm. like that. He obviously needs a point guard to go. Where the fuck is my boy? There he is. There he is. Benny Simmons. Hey, he beats him. Mate, I'll take uh, him around 100 every single time. I don't care. I just He's drafted him in our 20-man league, Ben Simmons. Yeah. Um, I think I ended up having a reach for him because it's a 20-man league. It's about mm-hmm. bloody – I think I had the second pick, so there's about 38 picks between me. Um, so I had to reach on, on him, but I think he – it's just the excitement factor of Ben Simmons, isn't it? Like you just fucking hope he's going to get on the court and just get back to what he was doing early on in his career. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, and look, when we think about it, too, everyone always thinks of the negatives from Simmons, but they forget this guy was like a walking triple-double. Um, mm-hmm. He was so unbelievably good in Philadelphia where I'm pretty sure he was like a top 15 fantasy player at one point. And, um, yeah, I... I got absolutely no dramas with say, like thinking that he could definitely come back to the point that he was in. So, and also too, he works all right for my team because my points were good. We obviously know that um, Simmons doesn't score a shit ton of points, but um, I still think he'll go okay on this Brooklyn Nets team. They got some good spacing um, yep. on the team, so I can't see why it wouldn't work. In all honesty. Yep. Yep. Fair call. A few picks gone, mate. I took D'Lo at one hundred and two. Um, I feel like the 100 to 110 range is okay for D'Lo now. You know, when you're getting a starting point guard, a guy that obviously can score well and mm. he'll get you some assists. And I think you mentioned it as well with Trey Jones. Like, just getting assist this late in the draft is yep. so valuable. I think, you know, the, we know that these drafts are really assist heavy early on. So, you know, if, you, if you're not picking up assists in your first two, three rounds, you almost kind of need to punt it unless you're going to target these kind of guys that can get them to you really late in the draft. 100%, mate. You're, you're spot on there. The like, Let's say like now we're at 108. Uh, for some reason, Scoot's still there. He probably should have been picked up earlier. But, you know, Dinwiddie around this range. It's Ben Simmons, um, Westbrook. And Simmons and Westbrook obviously both kill your field goal percentage. But then after that, it's Conley. That's pretty much it. Or if you believe in Bruce, uh, Malcolm Brogdon, um, they're the only ones that will get you roughly around six assists. So mm-hmm. if... Yeah, if you get to this stage of the draft, there's no one that's going to be able to get you eight assists besides Simmons and um, Westbrook, but they both kill your uh, free throw percentage. So that's why you have to get them early if you're going to target them. If you have that, um, you know, the Jokic, the Tyrese Halliburton, um, though, uh, ew, kind, of sh- kind of shade, but definitely um, Giannis. If you get Giannis, then Simmons and Westbrook are the right players to be... Um, to be picking up in the later rounds of that draft. For sure. Mm. And now, Scoot Henderson is still sitting here at 113. Um, yeah, is Jordan going to take him or A Burke going to take him? Because if they don't, I will. Um, that, that, oh, yeah, I won't even should. have to think twice if you're getting Scoot at 115. That's just outrageous. And it looks like you I just am. Got him. So, that is Scoot unbelievable. At, yeah, insane. He could go 80, and I reckon 80 to 100 for Scoot is value. Um, mm. And I just got him at 115. So, I mean, that's not going to happen to you in your real draft when you're playing for cash, I wouldn't have thought. No, absolutely not. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll definitely take that, though. That's uh, that's fair. fantastic for you. Now, what do I need? I need... I've seen Bruce Brown go recently. I like Bruce Brown around this this mark as well. Gary Trent Jr. just went. Bit of steals and threes there for him. Spencer Dinwiddie yeah. just went. D'Anthony Melton. What are you looking for here? Oh, I've got PJ Washington, mate. I don't know why everyone's staring at him nice. so much. It's a starting yeah, nice. power forward in um, uh, in Charlotte. There, um, no, that's that's everyday money. That's easy. And then, and I guess maybe it's the thought around Miles Bridges, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind yeah. of panicking around. That is, but then they at least have ten good games of him, you know. So that's all right there. Yep. Yep. Um, crap. Uh, no, we've got absolutely nothing. Yeah. Who'd oh, take who'd I take? Horford, Westbrook. Uh, so you took Shit, Horford. I took Horford. Bugger. I was trying to take <laughs> Is it auto drafted then? Yeah, I was trying to take Benedict Matherin. Ah, uh, spewing. He's in my oh. queue as well. Um, yeah. Now, Damn. the one I'm looking at here with this next pick could be a jo- my boy Josh Hart. Um, 
does a bit of everything. Where, he doesn't I don't know where really he let you down. Enough, yeah, I don't know. I, Tib seems to, well, Tib seems to love him. And, yeah. you know, they, they lent into him in a fair bit of minutes at the back end of last season into the playoffs as well. Yep, I agree there he, as well. I just I just don't know where he plays enough on this um, on the Knicks team. Like, they've got such yeah. a massive rotation. Mm. Yeah, they do. They do. They definitely do. Um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see. I mean, look, does, does the faith in RJ Barrett starting to drop? Yeah. Um, you know, who knows what's happening there. I yeah, mean, they've got Quinton Grimes starting as well at shooting guards. So there's a couple of guys there that could easily drop out of the rotation there. And, and Josh Hart is just that reliable guy. He gets his work done. He doesn't let you down anywhere either. So if you're looking for a really nice, safe pick at the back end of your draft in your potentially 11, 12, 13, 14th round, uh, Josh Hart's a, a pretty safe pick. Yeah, absolutely. I just need, I just want to make sure that I'm getting like the most amount of, um, like someone's going to give me a lot of minutes to be able to be yeah. able to get the most amount of points, and I'm just, I'm just iffy because obviously they've still got quickly. They brought in DiVincenzo, who plays pretty yeah. much the same position as Hart, obviously a little bit smaller. But um, yeah, I know Obi Toppin going. Ho- hopefully, Hart gets around around about you know 28 minutes. But geez, it's hard if, to try and look at him getting that many unless he's going Grimes off and he's on. So mm. yeah. I do. Yeah, I mean, I want to see it. But, yeah, shit. It could be a really good pick if he does get the 30-plus. Yep. Could be. Could be. Um, what else we got? Oh, so Schroeder and Matherin just going there. As well as Kelvin Johnson. Tell me your thoughts on Kelvin. Everyone seems off him. I mean... I'm off him. Is it because he, <laughs> is it because he was potentially going to be the sixth man this year now? Uh, no. Well, I was already off him last year because all he did was... Sh- shoot and doesn't do anything shoot, else. Shoot shots. Yeah, exactly right. Like he does nothing else. And now yeah. more of his shots are going to go to Wemby because uh, they have someone that can actually shoot the ball. Um, yeah, so I just – and then I sit there and go, well, what the hell is he going to do? For-? And if he doesn't – and then if he doesn't start, like he's nothing for my fantasy team. Yep. Yep. No, I agree. I agree on that. I'm probably not going to draft him this year. I mean, even – I'd probably draft Jeremy Sohan, who's still sitting here, yeah. over yep. uh, over Keldon Johnson this year. Yep. Um, Still got a, a few nice options here at the back end of the draft. I mean, if you want to punt every category and if fouls were a category, you've got Dylan Brooks there. You'd definitely win that category every single week. Um, want to be or a flop. Ejections. Yep. Yeah. Shit blokes. He'd be in the shit blokes 14, I think, if that's if that's where you were drafting. Yeah, bloody um, yeah. A couple of other guys we won't mention. Uh, I've got <laughs> a couple of options. I do like Patrick Williams this year. I do. Okay. Uh, coming off a career year last year. But okay. based on fantasy scores, there's one guy that's kind of slid um, and he's ranked 62 in this punt based on punting free throws and turnovers. And that's Stephen Adams. Now, mm. I know they're probably going to play a little bit of small ball maybe with Jaron Jackson Jr. at the five, which they did that last year. And obviously there's a, there's a world where Stephen Adams doesn't even make the rotation based against certain opponents. But... You just shore up your rebounds. You're going to get so many rebounds. You've got blocks there as well. He's not going to really hurt your field goal percentage either. He's not going to hurt your threes too much. Um, I don't mind him as a bit of a late round flyer, Stephen Adams. Yeah, no. You know what you're going to get from him. No, I 100% agree. And where else are you going to find 10 rebounds? Um, yeah, not at, not at 140, that's for sure. No, no, 100%. So, yeah, I know. I like it. And I'm actually going to take the bloke that we were just talking about before, Jeremy Sehan. Oh, nice. I like that. Yeah. So I'm gonna, yeah. oh, they, all of these picks, basically everybody's jumped out of the draft and I haven't even thought about my final pick. But, <laughs> uh, let's just uh, let's have a quick look through here. Josh Richardson. You know what? I, I don't mind Josh Richardson. I, I think he's got a role there in Miami. Yeah, um, I agree. I'm just going to take him for my final pick. And look, at the end of the day, in your final pick, we're talking 150, right? So mm. at the 150th you pick... You have a swing. You have a swing. You see what you can get with some upside. Uh, I'm, you know, Dylan Brooks is also an option in your final round in your last pick. You know, he is good at steals and and obviously can score the ball pretty well. That's kind of about it though. But um, yeah, but he kills your field goals because he shot. He does. Shots he does hurt some categories. Game. Yeah. So if you're punting that category, it could be a nice option. Oh, um, I mean, DeAndre Hunter not drafted. Brandon Miller. I know you're not very high on Brandon Miller, Skitty. Um, yeah. Still sitting here, not drafted. He's actually ranked 86 in Yahoo this year. Um, <laughs> Ridiculous. That's crazy. But the X with an X rank of 177. So it looks like the experts aren't really that fond of him. Uh, but no. he's got an ADP here of 131. So he is being drafted in probably the 12th or 13th round. Yeah. 
Yeah. But, but he hasn't look, gone then all again, in this one. Yeah, like completely fair enough. You have a swing on a rookie like that. Like that's absolutely fair enough. Um, you know, because he can, he could theoretically get points um, and some rebounds and everything. But I just don't know how much he plays this year. Um, mm. And I think there's better swings uh, to be had um, on other people like late in that draft. Fair call. But, mate, you, you pick with Jokic. You went from number one, mate. So do you want to talk us through your team? It's on the screen here if you need it. Yep. Um, I'm just trying to punch him into fantasy scores just to see if I can get me stuff up to see what, what yeah, nice. uh, Z, call, Z score ratings I have. But, um, yep. yeah, I'll, I'll punch it through now. Um, we have, so, first pick I had Jokic. Then I've gone Harden, uh, Paul Zingas, Zach Levine, uh, Chris Middleton, Ben Simmons, PJ Washington Jr., Jay Nivey, Jeremy Sohan, um, Trey Jones, Kyle Kuzma, and then unfortunately I got picked El auto picked El Horford when I wanted Matherin, but that's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, if I look over on fantasy scores, my assists are outrageously good. Um, I smack everyone in that, so that's nice. My turnovers aren't great. Uh, free throws, I've actually somehow been able to keep them positive, which is nice. My field goals, which I didn't really um, care about after I picked up Harden and Porzingis, um, they did, but that's all right. I'm, I'm still around the mark on that. My blocks are good. My threes are good. Uh, rebounds are good and points are good. So um, I'm pretty happy with how that uh, turned out besides my um, Al Horford. Besides your Horford. <laughs> the whole I will be That's... throwing him on the waiver wire as soon as possible. Um, so anyone from that mock draft that wants him, he's all yours. <laughs> yes, sir. Love it. Uh, how about you, um, mate? Talk me yours. Yeah, pick from six. I pick for Giannis, and I just want to kind of go and say that I'm not picking Giannis at six a lot. You know, mm. I'm picking. There's a there's a clear consensus top six. I don't know you, if you agree with this, but it's it's yeah. Jokic, it's Luca. It's um, Tatum, Shea Gilgis, Alexander, Halliburton. Who am I missing? There's one uh, more. Um, so you said Tatum? Yep. Uh, MB, uh, Jokic, MB. 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 Yeah. So, so those those six and guys I think need seven. to be your top six. Yeah, I think Steph's Steph seven. Steph's yep. always at seven, yeah. That's, that's a fair call. I think you're probably taking Giannis at eight, but I think just for the sake of the podcast, we thought we'll give it a go at six and see how what kind of team we can build. And I'm actually pretty happy with it, to be honest honest um so i've got tyler hero uh desmond bain josh giddy lebron james sorry lebron james uh Giannis and uh zion williamson i've got robert williams i went a little early on him i think I, if i could have that pick back again i probably would um stephen adams got him really late um then we've got daniel gafford i've got d low scoot henderson at 120 i think it was which is outrageous yeah. um and josh hart and josh richardson so josh squared there to round things out a bit of an all-round kind of team there, but definitely a very heavy punt away from um, free throws, turnovers, and threes in this one. Mm -hmm. But I think you kind of have to lean into that if you're going to pick Giannis, which is, I guess, the message yeah. in the end of the day. You've got to have a very clear punt strategy when you're building around Giannis. Yep. Um, yep. Um, yeah, I would just have to punch, punch it all into fantasy scores, and they'll tell us how they're going yep. on the punt wise. Um. Yeah, so luckily I, I did that in fantasy scores. I've got a team value of 0 0.9. So, uh, you know, when we're talking Z scores, obviously zero is dead average. So, you know, if you see a zero as a Z score for a player, it means that they're basically right on the average for that category or as a player in general. Um, the highest you can go as a Z score is three. So we're seeing uh, Jokic, you know, as an example, rebounds 2.48. Z score, which is pretty much like the, one of the best 2.77 for Anthony Davis is, is the best rebounder in the game in comparison to Z scores. Um, so, you know, if you're anything above the zero, you're in a positive area in terms of your Z score and in terms of your categories. So I'm pretty happy with 0 0.9 with, with that draft. Um, and the, the beauty of it is you can do all of this in fantasy scores. There's tons of other stuff as well that you can use as a trade analyzer. You can look at your lineup. You can actually set up waiver claims as well in advance to make oh, sure yeah. you don't miss when waivers open up. Um, and you can also look at yeah a ton of different stuff, weekly performance stats. Um, so and, and during your draft, you can obviously tick off as you go and it links into your draft with Yahoo. So don't forget, use that code insight to get five US dollars off with fantasy scores. And Skitty, we can't forget to shout out the standard squeeze. Great blokes over mm. there at the standard squeeze. They've looked after us all year. We've got the hats on. I've got my four in one. I've got a cup of tea tonight, being a good boy. It is a Monday. I can't drink oh, every night. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am a good boy. When I'm podcasting, mate, you take this very seriously, you know. 
Um, oh, I'm normally pissed. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a lie. Me and Mickey Dell had about 12 beers yesterday, so uh, disregard that. But um, yeah, thanks to the guys at the Standard Squeeze. And for anybody who wants to hop on, the standardsqueeze.com is the website and use the code INSIGHT15 to get yourself 15% off. And of course, Ryan from Astute Newstead, you can hit Ryan up for all your residential home loan leads if you want to have a look at uh, your interest rate or maybe you can improve on your interest rate, you want to refinance your mortgage. Skitty, you've done it. I've done it as well. Mm -hmm. We both work with Ryan personally. So this isn't just a plug for the sake of a plug. This is something that we've experienced personally, mate. So yeah, yeah and you obviously had a really good experience with Ryan as well. Oh, bloody hell, mate. Go in my house. And I wouldn't be sitting here like, you know, saying, oh yeah, this guy's great when and not knowing anything about him. But Yep. Seeing as he actually did give me my house, he worked through me with it all, like every step of the way, called him at Goddard and only hours of the night just because I had some stupid question that he just answered in five seconds and I felt like an idiot. But still, he helped me through it and I, I was peace of mind. I got the house that I wanted. So, uh, yeah, he's an, and he's an absolute legend as well. Uh, still have a yarn to him, with him the, to this day. So, no, nah, can't recommend him high enough. 100%. So you can contact Ryan at Ryan Astute Newstead on Instagram. You can also reach him at RyanH at EganWealth.com is his email. And just hit him up and just let him know that the Insight guys sent you. He will look after you. Uh, no fee for the consult as well. He'll just have a chat with you about what you need and whether he can help you and, and what options you have on the table. He's got access to over 50 lenders on panel as well. So it's not just about the big banks. You don't have to do any of the research yourself. He does it all for you. So hit Ryan up uh, for all your residential home loan needs. Skitty. Thanks for jumping on with me, brother. It's been fun. We mocked from six. We took Giannis. Um, we're going to obviously cover the seven to 12 range very soon. I think Matrix is coming up with number seven, uh, and that'll come down tomorrow. So keep an eye out for number seven. And then we've got eight to 12 to go, mate. And then I reckon by then the season will be upon us. Thanks for thanks for, thanks for for hopping on. Uh, hit subscribe, hit like. Uh, and obviously, if you're listening to the audio, make sure you follow. Uh, you've been listening to the Insight NBA. We'll catch you later. Peace.